Good morning, church. So good to see you. I'm so glad you're here today. Welcome. Today is a very special day. Believe for it Sunday. Amen? Believe for it Sunday. Today is Ben's birthday. He is four years old today. And we are going to not only celebrate Jesus today and what God has done in and through Ben and what God is going to to uh, continue to continue to do in and through Ben. Amen? The miracles we've already seen, I mean, that boy's a walking miracle. Amen? Our God is a great God. Our God is able, and today we're celebrating that. We're here to worship and celebrate Jesus and all that Jesus is doing. I hope you are ready. This morning I was just telling uh, Brother Larry that I'm about half lit this morning. He looked at me kind of funny. You know, the scripture says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm about half drunk with the Holy Spirit this morning. It's, it's been on already. We've been worshiping. We've been having a good time. And if I get broken or crazy, y'all just ignore me, all right? Y'all just, uh, just lift your hands and worship today, and let's celebrate together. We uh, want to start with prayer. All good things begin with prayer. And as we're praying this morning, let's remember Carl and... Jenny and the kids as they're traveling. And uh, remember those that have lost loved ones this past week. There are several. And those that are sick. But uh, if we could, somebody just, just reach across and get a hold of somebody this morning. I believe in just um, being connected as we pray. Get a hold of somebody's hand. Put your hand on their back or on their shoulder if necessary. All right, everybody up? Okay. Brother Chris, if you don't care, brother, would you open us in prayer this morning, please? Amen. Amen. We are glad to have Brother Larry Murphy with us this morning. Our Associational Director of Missions, Brother Larry, is going to bring the message that God laid on his heart for us today. We also have the Barnetts with us this morning. They're kind of hidden right now, and we have a choir. Lord have mercy. If you want to be part of a good choir this morning, just when they come out, jump on up here and get you a space. Amen. You'll never sound so good. <laughs> Amen. All right, Miss Peggy Stafford is going to come now and uh, read to us a poem that she wrote. We have a pulse. A spat on the bottom of a newborn baby brings a well from a child and joy to a family. The same joy is felt by so many listeners. We have a pulse from a baby who shows life again. Not a spirit that this time was given. God's spoken words return life. Now this baby is living. Let my baby live. Words pierced the heart of God as he responded to this mother and so many that love little Ben. Praise God for the process that Ben is making and continue to pray for him and his family. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. If you would stand with me. I'm going to read a passage of scripture from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Ooh, can you make it any bigger than that? 
There we go. All right. All right. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We stand here together as a family we join hands together lifting praises to the father above for sending his son we chose and together as a family to serve 
I surrender now. 
faithful. He won't leave you there. Amen? Amen. If we could have some of the ushers come forward this morning, we're going to have an offering right now. Get to worship God with your money, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Amen?
Let's pray, folks. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Father, you have given us everything, Lord God. You gave us your son to die in our place. Lord, you've held nothing back. So, Father, I pray that we would give you everything. And, Lord, now as we worship you with just part of what you've given us, I pray we'd be generous, Lord God. Thank you um, for this church. Thank you for this church and what it means to so many people, what it's meant to me and my family over the years. Lord, I pray that your spirit will continue to be poured out here. Holy Spirit, have your way today. In Jesus' name. sing it because we used to sing this to our little ones when they are coming up. You probably know it. Let me know when you're ready. My sunshine, my only sunshine.
while they're being seated, and I take nothing, nothing away from that song, one of my favorite songs. But David, I thought about Adrian Rogers. Adrian Rogers said years ago, the old saying was, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. But Adrian Rogers came back to say later, God said it, that settled it, whether I ever believe it or not. It's God's word. You may not ever believe it, but it's settled if God said it, folks. Look, get out of my way. <laughs> Y'all need to hire some better security. I begged, I begged them earlier to relieve me from Jim, and he didn't do it. He stood right there and let it happen. <clears throat> Take your Bibles and turn to uh, Psalms 150, please. And, and I will say this while you're finding that. I, I love musicians. I wish I could play anything. But David, you said earlier on Jesus Loves Me, whatever key you play it in, we'll sing it. You never sang it in a key they could play it in. That's the problem. <laughs> Bless his heart. He kept looking and never could find it. I finally did this, and he thanked me for it. <laughs> Psalms 150. I want you to think with me this morning about praise him. And, and we're going to try to move through this quickly because I don't want Norma Austin to be in church too long. <clears throat> but praise him. And, and there are about five things I want to say real quickly and, and, and we'll, we'll move on. I, I'm not going to read those six verses uh, just yet. We'll, we'll work through them. But I want to tell you that uh, to, to begin with that uh, mo many of you know from the hymnal Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby was one of the most prolific hymn writers in the world. At, a, at, uh, at six weeks of age, she was blinded, but still wrote 8,000 hymns. Here's what uh, Fanny Crosby said about her blindness. It seemed intended by the, by the blessed providence of God that I should be blind all my life. And I thank him for this time. If perfect earthly sight were offered me to get tomorrow, I would not accept it. I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I'd been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. Where's our focus today, folks? Where is our focus today? We live in a crazy world. I'm just going to say this real quickly, and there are, I don't know how many there will be, but X number of crazies this week in Anaheim, California, good and bad. I, I'm not there. I decided years ago when it came time for the Southern Baptist Convention, I had more important things to do. Normally, I'm in Kenya at this time of the year. I, I figured there were more important things to do than to go question everybody and listen to every answer and then still everybody walk away and do whatever stupid thing they were going to do in the first place. So I, I hadn't been in years. I don't, I don't bother, it doesn't bother me. That everybody that goes, I'm thankful for it. Uh, here's, the, here's the bottom line with me, folks. I, regardless of what happens in Anaheim or anywhere else, I'm going to go wherever Jesus goes. And I'm going to praise him every step of the way. And I'm going to stick with him. So where's our focus today? And, and folks, we cannot allow the difficulties and problems of this world to rob us of our praise. About 17 years ago, my father-in-law, who I admired and still do, passed away. Had pastored several churches, preached revivals, done this, done that. And when he died, my mother-in-law, who, who in about a few weeks will have been dead, about a year her, my mother-in-law looked at my wife and her two brothers and said, now we will show everyone what we've been preaching. We'll praise him. We're going to tell them that one day, she called him Jimmy, we'll see him again. We cannot let the difficulties of this world rob us of that. And we have to keep our focus and our praise on him, and we will put it on ourselves. You know who doesn't get any praise? God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said, deny, uh, deny, the, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. 
Do you, you know really what that, how, if you really, really look at that deny yourself, you know what the Greek really says? Get over yourself. That's really how it's translated. And, and if in West Tennessee vernacular we were to say it, Jesus really said, get over yourself because you ain't nobody. That's what he was really saying. If you were down here at Papa Daddy's, that's what Jesus would have said. You ain't nobody. Get over yourself. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. In the great scheme of things, I created you for my purpose is what he said. I created you to praise me, to worship me, to honor me, to serve me. I didn't create you to do anything else but that. And that's what we're supposed to be about. Psalms 85 says, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Folks, in this Psalms 150, six verses, we're told to praise the Lord 13 times. We're commanded throughout the Psalms 250 times to praise him. We are to praise the Lord. Every sentence, every word here is built around celebrating and honoring and praising the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13 says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Continually we're to praise him. Now, I want, I want to emphasize this, folks. A few years ago on a church staff that I was serving on, there's a lady there who I love, still love her, but, but, but if you were in a really, really, really good mood on Sunday, you tried to stay away from her, David. And one Sunday night after a worship service, when it had really been a good service, she caught me after church and said, Oh, Brother Larry, wasn't that a great service wasn't God present here? And I said, it was, but I'm going to watch you for the next 10 minutes because you're going to wreck it for somebody. I, I'm just being honest, folks. If you don't know me, I'm pretty honest. I guarantee before she left the building, she was already griping. Now, folks, don't, don't, please don't misunderstand me. Don't, 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 go, don't anybody go far to the another <coughs> world. We can, we can sway in the wind all we want here. But you better let the folks out there know what you did in here. This isn't praise until you go out there. This is just practice. This is just getting ready. So if you're praising and swaying in the wind in here and standing in line someplace griping, you ain't praising. David says we are to praise the Lord. And if you leave here, this service or any other service or any other any place you go, and you talk about wasn't that a great song, wasn't that a great sermon, wasn't that a great Sunday school lesson, wasn't that a great prayer, and you somewhere in that conversation never say, isn't he a great God, you miss the whole point of the songs and the sermon. We're to praise him, folks. It is all about him. And David says here in these six verses, real quickly, a couple, three or four things. Why, where are we to praise him? Look at verse 1. We're to praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. We're to praise him here. But you also know that the scripture teaches us that we are the temple of God. We're to praise him in ourselves. Folks should be able to see us and know there's something different about us. They should be able to drive this highway on Sunday morning and recognize your vehicle and know that you're going to act the same way tomorrow as hopefully you acted today. We're to praise him in the sanctuary. We're to praise him in the firmament. What does that mean? <clears throat> Wherever we are. Now, don't, get, don't misunderstand me. I, I'm not trying to talk about tree hugging and all that kind of stuff. I'm just talking about God created this place. And his word tells us in the book of Romans 
that the person who's never heard about Jesus should be able to look at God's creation and know that there is a God. <clears throat> Folks, that's praise. That's praise. We're to praise him in the sanctuary. We're to praise him wherever we may worship. And worship can take place all kinds of places. I do a lot of worship in the cab of my Dodge pickup. After I fessed up over what I said about the person that didn't use their turn signal or drove in the left lane or pulled out in front of me, when, when I retire, I want a job selling turn signal fluid because some of y'all don't have it in your vehicles. <laughs> and if you're making a trip driving 800 miles and you know when you get there you're going to drive you're going to turn left that doesn't mean you get in the left lane now and stay there at 55 miles an hour so i do a lot of worship in my truck what what the writer of psalms is saying here praise him in mighty firmament wherever we are whatever we're doing we're to praise the lord we're just to praise him. What are we to praise? Well, you just think about it. Look, look at uh, verse 2. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his exceeding greatness. You just think about, there's a, you could, we, could, we could spend here all day making a list, but let me just mention a, a few things. We're to praise him, as I've already said, is for his creation. We're to praise him for his ongoing care. You may not think he's caring for you, but let me assure you, if he wasn't, Think about what kind of shape you would be in. Well, you just don't know what I'm going through, brother. No, I don't, but you don't know what I'm going through, but it doesn't matter. This book says we're supposed to praise him. Every day. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Regardless of what takes place. Thirdly, how are we supposed to praise him? Look at verse 3, 4, and 5. Praise him with, it, basically it says there with a, with, a, with a musical. Bring out, regardless of what key it's in, bring out every instrument you got. It's basically what 3, 4, and 5 says. Sounding cymbals with loud clashing. Uh, you, Baptists can't read the first part of verse 4 because it talks about dancing. <laughs> and I'm going to promise you, I've seen some of you dance, and so please don't start it. Now, that was at Vacation Bible School, okay? It wasn't a, we're supposed to praise him. Now, but the real, real key about this, listen to this. It, it talks about all those instruments and things, but basically what the writer there is, to, is saying, we're to praise him with all that we have. Some of us couldn't hold a key in a bucket. Some of us would pick up one of these instruments and destroy it, just like that. Not everybody can sing or play an instrument or do those kinds of things, but what the writer is saying, whatever you got, praise me with it. Whatever you have, praise. Praise me. Folks, I want to tell you, I'm so full of praise this morning simply because God loves me. Every song we sang was great today, but you know the most important song we sang? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. And regardless of what takes place in our lives, he still loves us. And he still cares for us. And regardless how any situation turns out, we know that he loves us. And we're to praise him with every fiber of our being. We're supposed to praise him. Look at verse 6. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Who are you supposed to praise? It's not some sports person. It's not your favorite team. It's not some techie little gadget that you have or a new car or whatever. We're to praise Jesus. 